In today's lesson, we're going to learn about blending modes. With blending modes, you decide how the top layer blends in with the base layer. By the end of this lesson, you will know how to blend layers together and how to add overlays to your videos to intensify an element. Let's get started. You're going to need two footage to test out blending modes. Let's go ahead and get them. Let's get this video right here. And I will get an image. This image of the cat, drag it on top. Now, like we said, blending modes only work when you have two footage or more. If you have less than two, you will not be able to blend anything in because there's only one thing and there's nothing else to blend it with. I'm going to turn off the safe zones here. Let's head over to the compositing tab. If you double click on the top layer, which is what you're going to blend into your base with you, double click, you can see we have the blending options in this tab. So video, basic, it's right below transform. There we go, compositing. So let's learn a little bit about blending mode. If you open this up, we have a lot of options to choose from, and I'm going to explain what each one does, but generally you want to see what works best with your video. So the first thing is normal. Normal is your original video. There's nothing done to it. But below this, we have a category consisting of four blending modes. We have darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn and these four are together because they generally darken the colors in your blending layer which is the top layer in our case it's the cat photo we then have a second category that has lighten screen color dodge and linear dodge these four add to your brightness and they brighten up the uh, blending layer we then have a third category consisting of overlay, soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light, and hard mix. Now these, uh, this third group is mixing up things. So it's a combination of the dark group and the light group, each one with a different intensity. We then have a fourth group that only has difference and exclusion. Now these ones are removing from your colors and sometimes they invert them as well. So you want to make sure that you go to the right category when you're trying to blend a footage into your base footage. Now this top layer is referred to as your blending layer and the bottom one is referred to as your base layer. Whatever that's underneath the footage that you're going to change the blending mode off is called the base layer. Let me delete the empty tracks. And now let's go ahead and take a look at how each of these blending modes change the appearance of this photo. I'm just going to minimize it a bit so we can see the edges too. Head over to blending mode and now let's try darken. This is what darken looks like. You can see that it made the image a lot darker. So this blending mode only keeps the dark colors. And we're seeing that it's mostly keeping the uh, dark details from the cat, like the eyeball and the dark parts of the fur. You can use this blending mode to darken the colors that are in between these two layers. The next blending mode is called multiply. Now multiply is not only darkening the colors, but it's also multiplying the colors as well. So it will be darker than the first option. You can see this is darken, this is multiply. Multiply makes it a lot more darker. We then have color burn, this one, which darkens the colors and increases the contrast of the base. Notice how we're seeing the flowers in the back a lot more better than we did right here. That is because color burn is adding contrast to the base layer. The fourth blending mode is linear burn, which darkens the colors of the base layer alone. 
so we can barely see the cat and we're just seeing the traces of the flower. So this was the dark category, darken, multiply, color burn, and linear burn. Let's take a look at the opposite of the dark category, which is the light category. The first one is lighten. Lighten keeps the lighter colors. So it's the opposite of darken. You can see this was darken, it kept the dark colors, but this is lighten, it keeps the light colors. So notice our image mostly have dark bits. We have a gray background and the only light parts are the cat itself. So when we chose darken, we were seeing the background as well. But when we chose lighten, we can barely see the background and we're only seeing the bright parts of the cat. So that would be this area. And you can see we're not seeing the eyes because the eyes were dark. We're not seeing the background at all. We then have screen. Screen is the opposite of multiply. So it inverts the base and multiplies the top layer. You can see that compared to multiply, it's a lot more brighter. This is screen, this is multiply. So these two are the opposite. The third item from the light category is color dodge. This is again the opposite of color burn. Generally, whatever has the word dodge in it means that it's going to add brightness and whatever that has burn in it is going to reduce the brightness. So keep that in mind when you're working with blending modes. This term is used a lot in editing programs, so it's good to know what the term burn means and what the term dodge means. So color dodge is the opposite of color burn. Color dodge lightens the color of the base and reduces the contrast. So notice how the water and the flowers are clear and they're brighter than the other side. You can see how here it's dark. When it enters our cat image, it's brighter. Not only that, we are also reducing the contrast. So it's making the flowers flat. So you can see we're not getting that much detail as we are over here. And then finally, in the light category, we have linear dutch. Again, we have dutch in it, so it means that it's going to be brighter. Linear dutch is the opposite of linear burn. Linear dutch brightens the base and it increases the brightness of the overall top layer. So you can see here, the top layer wasn't as bright. We're not seeing much from the cat except for some traces. But with linear dutch, we're seeing an overall brightness on the top layer. So that was the light category. Let's take a look at the category that combines the dark category and the light category. The first one we have is overlay. Now overlay turns the bright parts brighter and the dark parts darker. So in our image, you can see that the gray background that was in our cat image is darker and hence we're getting this contrast right here. The flowers that were bright are brighter, hence why they're standing out like so. The cat is also getting some bright areas and the eyes are dark. Next in line, we have soft light. Now, soft light is a mix of dodge and burn. Remember that dodge means bright and burn means dark. This blending mode is giving us an overall soft finish and you can see that it's also called soft light. Below that, we have hard light which is a mix of screen and multiply. Remember that screen and multiply were opposites and in hard light, we're mixing those two together. This gives us an intense finish, as we can see here, comparing it to soft light. And that's why it's called hard light. Then we have vivid light. Now, vivid light is an extreme version of overlay and soft light. This was overlay, this is soft light. So vivid light is mixing these two together and it's giving us an extreme outcome. We have linear light, which is a combination of linear dutch on the bright parts and burn on the dark parts. So remember linear dutch and linear burn. 
but in linear light, we're mixing them together. So you can see we're getting a lot of contrast. Pin light is mixing darken and lighten together. So the result is rather faded. And with these blending modes, vivid light, linear light, pin light, and hard mix, you want to definitely remove the opacity because these are very intense. Finally, we have hard mix, which adds value to all the channels. So to the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. So you can see that it's pretty intense and we're barely seeing the uh, details from the cat. This category is mixing these values. Some of them give us a softer look and the other ones give us a harder look. The fourth category is these two. We have difference. Difference subtracts colors of the top layer from the base layer. You can see that this is also an extreme blending mode. The final blending mode is exclusion. This is blending every white invert. So every white in this photo has been inverted and that's why we're getting a grayish faded look. So remembering all of these may be a little difficult. So I would recommend going on each of these blending modes to see their outcome and then learn from practice. All right, let's click away. After you have chose your blending mode, let's choose something extreme. You can use the opacity slider to readjust the intensity. Like we said, this is necessary for some of the blending modes. Hard mix is an example. So I definitely want to lower the opacity to get a softer look. If you change your mind, you can hit this undo button or hit reset. There we go. So let's take a look at some examples and find out how we can use these blending modes in real life examples. I'm going to delete this cat image. You can also blend in videos. Let's look for overlay. Let's get a bunch of these. All right, so I'm going to drag this fire video on top of my flower video. Uh, it's not exactly fire, but you can see we have this pretty cool effect and I want to add it on top of this uh, flower landscape to make it look more magical. Turn this back on. Double click on your blending layer or the top layer and change the blending mode to screen. Now the reason why we're choosing screen and not lighten or overlay is that I have some glow in my video. You can see we have some nice glows here and I want to keep that and if possible increase the lightness so it looks even more magical. And that's why I need to go to the light category. Let's head to the light category. So lighten is not giving me a good result, but screen did an amazing job. Click screen. You can adjust the uh, intensity if you'd like. I'm going to keep mine at 100 because I'm pretty happy with this. Let me just remove the first bits. And now let's play this back. And you can see this looks pretty magical and I got rid of that black background with only changing my blending mode. Now notice after my base video finishes, this effect is gone. Because remember, blending modes is blending the top layer into the uh, second layer or the base layer. And if you only have one video, it's not going to blend anything because it doesn't have anything to blend into. And now I'm intensifying the element, which let's say it's magic here, by adding this overlay. You can get the same overlay by searching these tags. Hit OK. Let's try another example. Let's get something cool. I'm going to get this right here. This lake video. Head over to Pixabay. 
and look for rain overlay. And I'm going to get this rain overlay, drag it on top. This is the overlay. You can see that there are a lot of tiny particles. Double click on the video, video, compositing. And again, I'm trying to get rid of the black. So head over to lighten. You can also go to color dutch or linear dutch, depending on how intense you want those rain particles to be. But if you go to the dark category, you can see it's intensifying the black background. And you can also go down here if you'd like maybe a gloomy effect. We choose soft light and reduce the opacity, but I wouldn't recommend that. So the best one for this example is lighten. After you've finished, you can adjust the opacity. You can add a blur effect to this video to make it more realistic. Let's try an example for the darken category. Delete this. I will get this photo, drag it to my timeline, and then look for old paper. Drag this onto my timeline, double click to fill my screen. This paper is textured and I will be using blending modes to add texture to my photo. Double click, blending mode, darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn. So I can create a damaged film look. I think the best option is multiply. Click away, lower the opacity if you'd like. And now I have uh, kept these textures just by using the blending modes. So I have intensified the vintage and mysterious element by adding this textured image. And that was how you can use blending modes to intensify an element or just blend different footage in together. Let's move on to the next lesson where we're going to learn about motion tracking.